Hi, I am Vita Khalil Shivita Rizzi, and welcome to my lecture on a strategy for development of betas with superior genetics. I am an engineer by profession, and I have as a hobby the selective breeding betas and its genetics study. I have dealt with the betas since the 60th, and I started with them in the same way that many people. I got one, died. Acquire another, survived. Then I tried to mate it, failed, because did not have much information about its management cycle. At that time, almost 50 years ago, there was a lack of many things. For example, there is not easy access to the brine shrimp nopoli, and the specific beta literature was scarce. In this lecture, I suggest a strategy to improve the squad of bettas, which necessarily involves an effort aimed at spread between the breeders of knowledge about the beta genetics, and part of them, a new attitude with regard to the development of their lineages, responsibly, honestly, with quality in the information provided to who acquire a beta of them, as well as the awareness of the need for mutual aid between all. I hope you like it. Everything has a beginning. In the beginning, everyone starts with a small fish in an aquarium, just a pet, and some stop there. However, of course, there is those who want to move on and become a breeder. And the first thing that tames to do is the mating of bettas. At this point comes the first decisive test for those who want to deal with the bettas. Put the couple together in an aquarium and they do not mate, has fighting and even death. Alternatively, they do not fight, but the male does not build the nest, do not interact, that disappointment. Overcome these phases, the couple crossed, but the male ate the eggs. Finally, the offspring born, but forgot to produce their food. As a result, I try to improvise with powdered food and, of course, the entire offspring starves, disappears from the aquarium as if never existed. At this point, the breeder begins to exchange information about their failures with other breeders, and hits a form of management of litters. Get some juveniles. Then take them to adulthood, until finally hits the hand and begins the process of creating the bettas. Of course, that does not immunize the breeder as to future failures. These always will continue happening while dealing with the betta. The next attractive step within the betta world is the natural desire to develop a lineage. At this point, we have reached the first stage of the evolutionary path that most breeders walks normally. However, which lineage develop? There are so many. Each one more beautiful than the other. Different. Real jewels. Cannot tell which one you wish. We want all of them. We want cross all with all. Add the colors and shapes of each one to get something different, a new strain. However, what happens? Can only get betas with little beauty, far below what we were expecting. Indeed, disappointing results, common betas. At this point, we have reached the second stage of our evolutionary path. Now the breeder comes to a decisive crossroads. Comparing results with those amazing bettas that appear on the sites or with those from other breeders, he gets discouraged. Give up. And thus the hobby loses an opportunity to emerge an outstanding breeder. Or he, who is with a lot of bettas and doesn't know what to do with them, decides to sell them, and sells the idea to the unwary that he has a new strain, inventing a name that describes what we are seeing. Like, Blue Dragon Placot Double Tail Full Mask Marble Red Yellow. This name an F1, that is in the first mating. Because, in the second mating this same lineage, 
in quotation marks, will be called, pink marble black double tail no mask teal blue. Comparing the results obtained in two generations, we see that one has nothing to do with the other. And this happening at F2, that is in the second mating. If the breeder goes further in his work by following this line, in my view, inadequate, and in some cases, not ethics, only produces bettas without any genetic quality. Nevertheless, there is a third way that the breeder can pursue. Start from scratch. At this point, we have reached the third stage of our evolutionary path, and that is where I start my proposal of the strategy for bettas with genetic quality. Important to make it clear that always existed breeders concerned with the genetic quality of their works. However, that number is still small compared to the other, in which no one cares about that. When the breeder really wants to bet us with good genetic quality, he should look for responsible breeders, honest in their purposes, which have a control with the information about what occurs in their litters over the years. However, what happens is that these information that the breeder does, first of all, are inaccessible to most people, are of personal nature, for own use. Do not present a standardization in notes that could not serve to another breeder which acquires a beta of it because these annotated data are, or incomplete, or non-existent, really absent, since the interests of the one breeder may be focused on different characteristics from those expected by another breeder. Another complication factor is the way they are identified or coded the bettas and the litters of this creator to record, again, our personal encodings, certainly not fit with those invented by another creator to control. To circumvent these problems relating to access with transparency to information from the breeders about their works, as well as avoid the personal encodings. I suggest the development and activation on the web, a site where everyone can register as breeders. Register their lineages. Register their litters by filling screens provided by the system, via network. Send photos of their bettas and of course with the whole world having free access to all these information. That way, would have standardized reports that would be filled by the breeder since registered, and made available on the site, and get the beta genealogic tree, that is, with all data about what happened in each looter, of every generation, both on the part of the father and mother, including the photos of all registered bettas involved in their work. Therefore, who wanted to purchase a beta with proven genetic quality, will be able to, through the site, get what want. On the other hand, it is necessary for both, those who want to start over in creating bettas correctly, as those who already are creating longer, deepen in the beta genetics study. For this must need a course well structured, with didactic and easy assimilation on the subject, and descriptive documents about the patterns of the existing lineages, and another about the types of bettas fins. Then, in this stage, must produce a beta genetics course for interested breeders, and provide descriptive documents about the patterns of lineages and shapes of bettas. Of course, that suggested site on the network to receive the data from the breeders about their works also makes part of this work in support to the outstanding breeder. Thus we concluded the first phase of our strategy. With the breeders with a good genetic base, with descriptive documents about patterns of lineages and colors, and on the bettas formats, we can start thinking about forming regional associations or local associations to gather breeders willing to study, preserve and develop new qualities to the bettas, placing them into a new level. As an immediate consequence, there will be exhibitions at all levels local, 
regional, state and national, however, all of them based on the improvement of the genetic quality. The show of exhibitions will now aimed at two audiences, one who only wants to see something beautiful, in the same way that appreciates an agricultural exhibition and an orchid's exhibition etc., and that directed to the breeders that seek an evaluation for their works and an opportunity to acquire new good bettas for their lineages. Since we are talking about evaluation, there will be trials, and therefore, judges able to take them forward which suggests that we should have a set of consistent documents and easy to understand, with a quick and practical application, aimed to the judges' training, containing workable rules, with their descriptions of the scores for each quality observed and penalties for each type of failure, that document shall also be produced. In this way, both the general public as specialized breeders may have access to bettas with superior quality, at reasonable prices, since there will be a plenty. I hope so. Finally we reached the second and final phase of our strategy for development of bettas with superior genetics. To make an overview about what exposed in this lecture in such a way as to have a joint vision of this strategy, I list the five steps as follows. Step 1, learn how to create and improve the handling with the beta. Step 2, try to get quality in bettas. Step 3, arise works without genetic quality. Now comes our proposed strategy for improving these bettas. First phase, Arise work with responsibility and consistency, with honesty and ethics and proposals of the breeders, standardized control of the mating, involving better genetic study, presentation of documents with the existing lineages standards, presentation of documents containing the formats of the fins. Second phase, creations of associations and responsible technical exhibitions but also aimed at the general public, and, training of judges to beta trials and documents containing the rules for trial. Here we finish our lecture. Thank you and see you soon.